Hi guys, welcome back to Beal Science. I'm Craig Beals and today we're dealing with coffee, my absolute favorite drink in the whole wide world. And the first time I saw one of these siphon brewers actually work, I was completely mesmerized because as a science teacher and especially as a chemistry teacher, there's a whole bunch of amazing stuff going on in this simple contraption. The trouble with these things is that they can be quite expensive and I got to thinking to myself, wait a minute, here in the lab, I've got all the equipment to build one of these. So I challenged myself to see if I could. Now I'm gonna show you how this one works starting off because it's absolutely amazing. And then I'm gonna show you what I came up with and show you how you can build your own little coffee siphon at home. Let's start off with the store-bought version, the much prettier version, if you will. But here's what you've got in a siphon brewer. You've got a top hopper with a filter. That was the white thing you saw in there. We're going to start off with some hot water and then we're going to heat that up. We want to get it up to boiling point where it's turning into a vapor. The coffee goes into the top hopper that's got the filter and then that gets sealed down into the round bottom flask. Eventually that water gets pushed up into the grounds and it starts to brew. Look at that. Then when you take the heat off it gets pulled back down by gravity and through siphoning into the bottom you pour it back off and you've got this wonderfully brewed coffee. But it's all fine and dandy if you buy it. It's way better if you build it, especially with chemistry equipment. So here's the setup, the prototype of many prototypes I came up with, and I'm gonna walk you through building this. Now I wanted to use everything that was in the chemistry lab. Of course, everything has been sanitized or is brand new. And this is just regular old tubing that we use for many things in the lab. So we heat that up so that we can bend it. And I just want two right angles here so that I can go from the Florence flask, that's the one with the round bottom, over into my other beaker. Then I need to cut it to size. So I've got a glass cutter here. This just scores the glass. I put on my glass gloves and snap. There we go, I've got it to the perfect size. Heating up the ends, that smooths them out a little bit. Now, here we go. This is the tubing I'm gonna need to attach some things together. It's one quarter inch inside diameter. I've got some heat shrink tubing. I've got a nice glass funnel that I've shortened, and then a number six stopper with a hole. That's a six dash one. To get the stopper, I'm gonna add a little bit of mineral oil so that this slides in easily. Always wear the gloves in case it shatters and you don't shove it through your hand. As we start to assemble this, I need that stopper to fit in there super tight and I need just about a millimeter gap between the bottom of the Florence flask and my tubing. Now here's the trouble. My lab tubing is not the correct diameter that it's gonna seal up nicely with the plastic tubing. So I've used the heat shrink to increase the diameter of the glass and get a nice seal. Okay, I've just taken a regular filter here, just a regular coffee filter, and affixed it to the bottom of my funnel, and then put a beaker underneath it. So here we go. Here's the Beale Science version of the fancy coffee siphon. Let's fire this bad boy up. So here's what's going on. The water's getting really hot in here. As it does, it's gonna turn into a vapor and some of the air that's stuck in it is gonna escape. When it goes from a liquid into a gas, it's going to take up more volume. And as it takes up more volume, that's gonna put pressure on the sides of the glass and it's gonna put pressure on the water. Well, the water has nowhere to go. It's gonna get pushed down as this area fills up with gas. As it gets pushed down, the only place it has to go is up that little tiny glass tubing and we should see it headed right up here. So I'm going to push this down nice and tight now, get it sealed, and we should start to see the water travel over this way and down. There it goes. It's right here. You see it? It's coming right down here. Time to add coffee. And as the water comes over, it's going to be at about 200 degrees. That's perfect brewing temperature. Important to mix it up just a little bit. 
I want to stir it. You want to break the crust up at the top to get all of those grounds mixed in with the water. Now, I want it to stay over there for about a minute and a half. So I got to keep the pressure up. I got to keep the heat up on this side. Look at that coffee. I'm going to go ahead and shut the heat off. And what should happen is we should get a vacuum headed back this way because all of this is going to cool down and the water droplets are going to recondense. As they condense, they take up less space, less volume. Therefore, because there's no other air able to sneak in here, it's gonna squeeze in or vacuum in and hopefully draw all the brewed coffee back over here and leave the grounds over there. Here goes nothing. Going off. <laughs> Look at this! Look at this! <laughs> this is perfect! You have no idea how many different contraptions I've tried, how many times I've tried to do this. And for whatever reason, I get a clog, I get an air leak. Whoa! Oh. I guess the only way to find out if it's gonna be any good is to taste it. <laughs> the perfect coffee. <laughs> We've done it. The perfectly brewed cup of coffee using science, using gas laws, using just a whole lot of magic. Oh, and it really is good. It's just fantastic, it's smooth coffee. Now here's the thing, not everybody has all this glassware laying around, but if you wanna get ambitious, you could build one. And think of this on your countertop. This is way more intense than just turning on the old drip coffee when the friends come over. You can wow them with science. Yeah, I guess class is over. Time for me to take my coffee and do some chemistry. Thanks for watching. Yieldscience.com. Leave me a comment. See you later.